The taxi driver. He sits. This new taxi driver. Atop a sheet of stretched and worn thick leather. A well used automotive bench seat for his work and pleasure. His and that of every other cabbie who sat behind the steering wheel. For which the taxi's dispatch assigned key had held hopes of promised treasure. If pleasure or treasure it might be, and not some life stage arrived at in a blunder, the fake leather bears scars of countless encounters with his now and past driver's rumps making ins and outs, where the center seam should have been, a band-aid of aging, peeling, duct tape, covers over a prominent tear, where a driver lost his mind one night and cut it with his knife. The seat sags to the left and a bit to the middle where there protrudes a rise of bunched up filler. Pushed there by too many fat pounds that slid in fresh at first at the beginning of each new eight hour shift. Then sat they and wiggled and, and jiggled in growing displeasure of the rusted coils pressing ever upwards squawked at each hump and bump and roadway blunder while seeking escape from under the fake leather and from the bouncing pressure applied by the shift rotating pimply buttocks and sweaty flesh encased in soiled and smelly cotton briefs in which the tormented driver sat doomed they were there to sit for hours in empty lies Restless found they being economically bound, lives that had long lost their youthful wonder, they like he come to pay had sat for many a long and weary hour, with cigarette stained hands and stomachs full of gas, that through the fake leather and skivvies was passed for relief. There was no thought about tomorrow, just about the ending hour as the hands, one steady calm, now shook with dependency alarm, the key dropped into the dispatcher's hand. The lonely walk to the corner bar where tips would be counted, never enough, never enough for life to cover, where liquid friendship waited and the hungry females sat that would laugh at old jokes and drink warm beer with him, while acting as though he was the best of the pack Yet behind her tired smile, all she thought about was the money in his pocket and how best to separate that from him. There was nothing else left for him to give his daily task. A fast trip from A to B. Smiles as best he could, hoping of engaging the prize of a tip. Now he sits in the gloom of night, the chauffeur in a yellow and blue striped taxi with a sign on the trunk advertising inexpensive and finance cremations, offering discounts. If you need more than just a one, family group occasions are always such fun, and one for an attorney who will fight for a sum. With a light atop his cab turned on and has been there for a while, he sits with a meter waiting to be run, the flag to be pushed down. In front of the address the radio just minutes before had given him, a cigarette smoldering, adding to the tobacco stain on his fingers and thumb, the cab's engine purring with a warm and friendly hum, static squawks on the radio, hisses and driver dispatch talk. He presses down on the horn and fumes at the weight. This isn't his first fare tonight, nor will it be his last pickup. He looks out through cigarette tired glass surrounding and hopes for clear skies to last the night. And he prays to whoever might be there and listening that no passenger might be his last fare with a brain filled with worms who might wish to steal his life for a purse laying close by him, almost empty and not worth the fight. That's it. Goodbye.